Greetings fellow makers, I have a trick to share with you. I've j I'm just about to start sculpting a life-size horse in clay, just a head and a neck for a puppet. And uh, since I like the system, I'm going to share it with you just in case it helps you out. Um, we can use so many different ways of making armatures to support our clay when we're sculpting. This is a first for me for this sort of shape. I mean, my horse is life-size, so we're talking 50 centimeters long for the nozzle. From the nozzle to the back of the head not counting the main so this is going to be here the armature does not interfere with the building of the mouth plate um i'm sculpting i'm going to sculpt this in clay uh, water-based clay but you could use oil base if you want if you have enough of that water-based clay is easier to get um for most people it could be different kinds of water-based clay i don't recommend the kind that's designed to become little uh, air dry sculptures. I recommend the kind that's designed to be pottery clay because that stuff is reusable for years and years. Anyways, um, this structure here, the very uh, important part of it is how the foundation is made. So we have some uh, thick birch plywood. Now birch plywood is much more heavy quality. Um, I mean, stronger quality and much more expensive than your regular hardware store uh, variety of um, of plywood. Of course, some hardware stores do sell that stuff, uh, but it's super expensive. It's just that I had some scraps from previous projects. And if you really want to build something strong, go with birch. The tabletop I'm using right now is three sheets of birch plywood. I can dance in the middle of that table. It's 60 inches long. There is no middle support but it is strong enough for that. So birch plywood is amazing. I had another piece of regular plywood to thicken up my, my total thickness for my screws to be uh, biting into two pieces of wood instead of one. I really needed this, this base to be super strong because all that weight will be away from the central post because it's a head over here. So you don't want it to rip out. You can't use those tiny, tiny screws. So I went with one inch and a half of screws. These are for DEX, uh, DEX screws. So um, they're made for um, making your DEX outside. I like these screws because they're brown and not, they're not shiny like the other ones, like zinc plated. So anyways, those are the ones I use. This uh, fixture is this fixture here is for plumbing those are very difficult to find nowadays depending on where you live of course but around here in montreal canada uh, the stores have stopped carrying them years ago i have sometimes if i see them uh, i buy them no matter what the size is if they're big enough for a strong enough dowel to hold the types of sculptures i do i just buy it because um i know it's going to get more and more difficult to get them so this piece is carl is called a flange this piece is called a nipple and then from these you can you know stack other pipes on it you can buy lengths of pipe pipe is still available but for some reason these fixtures are not sometimes they have the pipes uh, the, the, the the nipples but not the flanges sometimes they have the flanges but not the nipples so it's really frustrating so i refuse to buy these pieces if they're separate i want to make sure that in my hands when i buy it i have a pair i have a matching set so I'm running out of these um, for some reason. I must have given them away with some projects. So I think I found a supplier of plumbing supplies that still has what I need. But these are invaluable for your art studio. I use them to hold my webcam up uh, as part of the system that holds it up. You need to find some pipes that are standard sizes that will fit with whatever you, whatever big hardware dowels you have access to. This is a perfect match here. It's only got a tiny bit of wiggle I don't mind it if I really want to remove the wiggle I'll put some tape around the shaft and it will make it a bit tighter but I really want to be able to turn my sculpture here without having to turn my entire base if I get tired of it if I really don't need the rotation if I find that's not something I need I'll just tape it I'll just use the box tape this is a plastic tape I used to use the same kind of tape but made of cellulose but I can't find it anymore the stores have started carrying the plastic variety which I find not really ecological but anyways uh, i would just tape it like a few turns of this tape and it would immobilize it um so the structure is that big pole of hardwood hardwood um hardwood and then the top of it is a piece of very thick this is like i don't know what caliber or size it is but 
the wire is almost as thick as a regular pencil and I bent it in a U shape and then again at this weird angle here and I taped it at the bottom it goes all the way down here I taped it here to stabilize it taped it at the, at the top here then I tested to see how strong it was how much you know strength I needed to bend it I don't want it to bend at all with all that weight of clay on it so I um, I added this triangle here that's cut to match the angle that was already there I just took a just put the piece of wood behind it and I traced what I needed cut it on the bandsaw and just taped it in place with several layers of that tape it doesn't move sideways it doesn't move up and down and then I figured out that this triangle could go through the plastic tape that was linking these two bars you know the bending you know the bended wire or rod so I put more tape there just to be sure and I put a piece of thin plywood you can see the little triangles step away here I left them there uh, instead of cutting them off because they can help keep the clay from falling down from sliding off so I just forced this um, this thin plywood here underneath you know the main piece between the main piece and a triangle just to force the triangle not to go through the tape over time and then I put this these two blocks on top to serve as shelves again to prevent the clay from sliding off that should be more than enough for what I'm about to do but I, it might be it might turn to be a catastrophe because sometimes as you sculpt you figure out that oh that's not as strong as I thought and you probably have to strip out some of the clay carefully um, modify your armature and then put it back without having to re-sculpt everything so um, here's another bonus trick um, I've just installed because I really don't have walls left here I only have shelves everywhere I put these beams on top of my table and I put this uh, board in between them to create a tool wall and it's really useful um, it changed my way of working I'm more efficient since I did that last week my main problem with it is that there's a bit of vibration transferred through the poles and it shakes a bit and it makes a noise that annoys me so I'm going to uh, put some rubber on top of the screws and hooks that are holding these metallic objects and I'm gonna put some leather or something else underneath the tools to absorb the shock so it won't make that noise anymore so um, just so you know you know sometimes you don't have a wall if you don't have a computer behind your work table like I do you might just want to put a tool uh, a pegboard right there and put your tools I've seen that before but I've never seen the arch so I just thought I'd share about that too thank you for watching if you have any questions go ahead if I can explain it within a few minutes I can sir I will certainly try if it's more complicated I do offer online training uh, via Skype or a, or a private streaming in high quality better than this this is just done quickly but um, yeah this is uh, something that might benefit some of us so I figured I'd share like I usually do. Thank you for watching.